we talk about the immune system, but it isn't the immune system. It is the psycho-neuro-endrocological immune system. You know, it isn't separate. It is all of these things. Part of uh, biomedical systems in, in Western science is to take things apart. But we're now coming to an age where we're now, we know enough about the parts, we can actually put them together. A car is not just a collection of parts. It is the wisdom that went into the invention of it, the concept as well. So I think that's one of the, the great things about the medicine in the future, about evidence-based integrative medicine, is that we will look at whole systems, not just the parts of things, but we will do it in a rational way where we can understand the science behind it. Um, I talked about that. Uh, again, obesity, insulin. Insulin is a, a growth uh, compound. Uh, bodybuilders in, in America and people like that foolishly inject insulin to build muscle. Um, again, I talked about that. Fat is active. It's not just uh, a hunk of uh, tissue. Uh, some more of the studies on that. Obese person cells are urged to grow and divide at an accelerated rate. Obesity produces growth factors, inflammation, insulin, and hormones. Cancer in our environment. Um, this is a uh, occupational exposure, uh, paternal uh, and maternal exposure. They did a study in, in New York City uh, three or four years ago looking at fetal blood and they found about 290 carcinogenic compounds in fetal blood. They took it from the uh, uh, umbilical cord, thank you. They took it from the umbilical cord at birth and that's in New York City. I mean that's not even an industrial area particularly, Manhattan. So we are exposed to an enormous amount of chemicals in our environment. Now there was obviously in very trace amounts but still it's significant. They're telling women in, uh, in uh, northern Canada, uh, uh, the Inuits, not to breastfeed because they have so many organic pollutants in their breast milk for children. Because, you know, all the stuff that evaporates, goes up at the equator, settles at the poles. And the high systems, you know, so the fish eat that. And what eats the fish? Bigger fish. And what eats the bigger fish? Polar bears and what? And seals. And what do? Who eats the polar bears and seals? The Inuits. So they are at the top of the pollution chain. Um, industrial uh, persistent organic pollutants, radioactive isotopes. All of these things are again are associated with cancer. Environmental factors and breast cancer uh, was done in a study. There's a, twins in Sweden, Denmark, that showed that cancer risk adopted children parallels their adopted rather than their biological parents. So it's your environment. And we keep on saying, oh, it's genetic. It's not genetic. If you get cancer, and this, this is difficult because people get cancer, they, the immediately thing they think, feel is guilty. What did I do wrong? And we need to get rid of that because it isn't about guilt. Uh, we all know the story of the guy who's 95 years old. He drinks every day, smokes, he's overweight, and he dies because he's hit by a bus <laughs> chasing after a young woman. <laughs> and then we look at somebody who's a vegetarian, who's exercised and is very thin, and they get breast cancer at 30. So, no, I mean, there are many factors there. So it isn't it isn't personal in the sense that you did something wrong. However, we need to, as a culture, look at what we're doing in our environment and make changes there for all of our sakes. So, yes, it is the environmental factors that are associated with this. Um, and this is not the study. This says 75%. Water and air. There are 75,000 industrial chemicals in uh, the U.S., and I'm sure there are just as many here in, in South Africa. 
uh, in a uh, study in, in South Africa revealed there is an adverse impact of uh, physical chemical uh, characteristics in groundwater. So I don't know what it is particularly in Johannesburg, but you have polluted groundwater. Um, there are 45 million kilos of carcinogens discharged by industry into the environment annually in the U.S. Cancer is more likely to happen in these industrial areas and they're more likely to happen again with people who are poor. Why? I don't know what it is here, but in Australia you can buy junk food cheaper than you can buy the raw ingredients that you could make it out of. You know, for five dollars Australian you can get a, a hamburger, a milkshake, and fries, or a Coke. You couldn't buy the raw materials for three times that cost and then cook it yourself. So obviously people who are, the poorer people are eating more of the junk food because for economic reasons. Yeah. Also they're high, more highly stressed. You know there was a study that was done in I believe it was in the US and they looked at stress levels and they would think that the people at the executive level would be highly stressed. They weren't. It was people on the shop floor, the factory floor that were more stressed. Why? Because if you feel you are in control of your destiny, your stress levels go down. If you feel you have no control over what's happening in your life, your stress levels go up. So obviously executives feel empowered. And that's really an important thing. Those of you who are practitioners, I encourage you to empower your patients so they feel they are in control of their life. And we might call that placebo effect. I call it just common sense. Oh, okay. Uh, manufacture sulfur acids. This is a, uh, I didn't know this, that you have the highest level of uh, sulfur dioxide per square kilometer of anywhere in the world. And it's not very far from here, I understand. Is that right? Transvaal High Veld? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I, you know, when I was doing, thought about the seminar, I looked. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty astounding. So the air here is not very good. The water is not very good. Environmental estrogens. <coughs> a lot of things mimic estrogen. A lot of chemicals, a lot of plastics. Never, um, uh, for example, cook in plastics, microwave in plastics. All of these things have estrogen-like compounds in it. So best to avoid. I don't know of any solid studies that say they are directly affecting the development of breast cancer. But certainly, just from a common sense point of view, it is unnecessary to do so. And so they're best to avoid that. Um, again, many synthetic chemicals mimic estrogen. Xenoestrogens affect the development of breast cancer. Again, this was a study that was done. And again, we look at the, the, uh, the uh, 216 ratio, which is so critical in that. Uh, alternative pathways yields uh, uh, genotoxin, the 16 alpha, which en enhances breast cancer growth. And again, one of the factors that reduce that ratio or alter that ratio, raise two and uh, suppress 16, is fish oil. So just simply having EPA, DHA will help adjust the 216 uh, estradiol ratio. Um, again, some more studies that were done on environmental estrogens. Um, and the, obviously they are going to affect women more directly in terms of breast cancer, but they affect men as well. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, elevated levels of estrogens in a man is not necessarily healthy. And and also we're looking at the same thing with, with the alteration of testosterone. I haven't did any studies here, but I've seen some of those studies that Estrog uh, the testosterone levels in men is also being altered quite substantially by these, these factors. Um, again, this is more of the studies on the 216 ratio and uh, omega-3 oils. These are some of the uh, environmental factors that are associated with uh, elevated estrogens in the body, including heavy metals. Remedies. Things we can do to help avoid cancer. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these things. I mean, again, as I said, the, the website uh, will have this, and you can take a look at that. And uh, um, 
look at them in detail and look at some of the references there and do your own thing. This was a study that was done on uh, 